Greetings, everyone. We want to welcome you today to the We Are Floor Pro podcast. I'm your host, Latasha J. Humphrey, founder of the Floor Pro Foundation Incorporated, and I'm super excited to get into this podcast today. But before we get started, I want to introduce my co-host, Destiny McCarter hey. and Nisa Mohammed. Hey, y'all. <laughs> So we're going to jump right into it. And so, Nisa, if you'll lead us into our moment of silence today. Yes. Um, okay. So greetings, everybody. I hope your week has went well. Your weekend will treat you better. So our moment of silence today, um, if y'all are keeping up with the news and social media, um, Glee actress Naya Rivera um, is presumed to have went swimming with her four-year-old and some people in another boat riding by, found her child on the boat alone. So she is missing. And so our moment of silence is to sit and reflect and really just keep her and her family in our prayers and hope that she gets found safe and sound. So our moment of silence is for Miss Rivera and the Rivera family. All right, y'all. So we're going to um, jump into our feelings check-in. So we're going to start with you, Nisa, today. How are you feeling, sis? Uh, how am I feeling, sis? Okay. Well, we're going to mix it up today. Instead of giving y'all a word, I'm going to give y'all a song title. And the song title today for me is um, "It's All About Me by Maya featuring Cisco. Um, I told Ms. Humphrey earlier before we started recording, like, I've taken some time to do a lot of self-care that I needed this weekend. So this weekend, my song is all about me. Okay. So, yeah. Good stuff. What's up, Miss Destiny? <laughs> um, my feeling, my song for the day is 21 by her. I'm mm. 21 now. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> okay, but I've been talking a lot about my birthday today, and it's coming up August seventh. Just to put that out there, quick plug. Um, Why didn't I know you were a fellow Leo? Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Sure. Hey. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, thank you, Asha, sis. So if they love you, they'll send it to you. <laughs> Something about them Leos, though. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm excited about my birthday. It's not turning out exactly how I expected, but I am excited to be an official adult, adult, you know? Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool beans. Mine is on the 24th. I'm not going to take that shine, though, from you, but yeah, it'll it'll come up. (laughs) It's coming up this month, but just, you know, I celebrate all months, so you know. Okay. Uh, My song is Beautiful by Pharrell and what, Snoop? So like, <laughs> so that's my I saw today. I really I like that, you know, just the whole beat and everything. So yeah, yeah, that's my song like today. That. Yeah. So, <laughs> Nisa, we gonna get into this. What's really real? You okay. go, uh, bruh. <laughs> Usually, when I do what's really real, I come with the heavy hitters, and y'all be sitting there like, here come this melodramatic chick again. However. This week, I thought I'd be upbeat, you know what I'm saying? Especially because <clears throat> Chiron is in retrograde. So uh, well. You, but <laughs> my baby's definitely in retrograde, so these emotions and that things is high. So, um, what's really real? It is a little heavy, but, you know, nothing prayer can't fix, y'all. So, the mayor of Atlanta, Miss Keisha Lance Bottoms, has tested positive for COVID-19. So, mm, we want to make sure we keep absolutely. her, her family, and her loved ones in your prayers. You know, mm-hmm. lift them up high, speak nothing but positive and light to them. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so she didn't even know, you know, she was like, hey, you know, I just happened to just go in and get tested one day, came back with it, so we're definitely going to be quarantining. So I definitely hope that she and her family, you know, get through it and it doesn't turn into something drastic. Yeah, so yeah. do we. Absolutely. Prayers up yeah. for them on that. So we got to talk about your girl, Betsy. <clears throat> Why are you? Okay. 
Okay, it's brief, y'all. We're not going to dwell on it because we beautiful today. We 21, and it's all about me, right? So we're not going to dwell on Betsy too much. Betsy, Give her too much air time. She just has this way of bringing unpeaceful energy to a peaceful situation. Mm-hmm. She does. <laughs> she, said, uh... <laughs> she definitely does, but... So just so y'all know, um, and this will probably make you happy. The states are suing the Department of Education about what they're doing with this money for COVID and going back to school. Okay. Now, elaborate a little bit on that. So remember we talked last time when we said that Betsy's still firm on her stance of having that money go to not just the schools who needed it. She felt like the children in private schools would get some of that money, too. She's standing firm on it. Quote, unquote, it's not fair, right? Because they really do need it, whatever. Um, Well, the states are like, that makes no sense if we got schools that don't have tissues and books and soaps and things like that. So the states are suing for that money back. Because it's money that they need, you know what I mean? Instead of that money going to private school students who are getting their tutors paid for and their after-school activities and their buses when private school kids don't take the bus, um, they're saying, well, what about the fact that we need to be able to clean these schools that these children are going to? We need to be able to provide lunches. They need books. If they need tutors, how are we going to be able to get them the sufficient amount? If half that money, I think it's almost, what, $13 million? Don't quote me, but I think it's almost $13 million. It's going to private schools. So the states aren't having it. And I'm here for them not to have it. We're not having it together. Yes, we, we are too. Awesome. That sounds good to me. <laughs> Represent, <laughs> states. <laughs> okay, Betsy ain't making us mad today. No, not the states are coming in. They coming through. Okay. <laughs> what they pulling up for real? <laughs> right. That's just outside. Oh. oh my. That's a beautiful thing, and I definitely hope everything works out in the state's favor because really, it is about the children at the end of the day. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, Always. We have a responsibility to make sure that their future is as bright as it can be. So yeah, definitely. Um. In honor of the late and great Kobe Bryant, may him and those passengers of that plane rest in peace. Um, the makers of the game 2K, you know, that famous basketball game that our boyfriends and husbands ignore us for each year, ladies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they are coming out with a 2K21 Mamba Forever edition cool. in honor of Kobe Bryant. And if you go on the website, you can order the pre sale now. But I think that that's beautiful. It's a beautiful way to honor him. And the impact that he had on the game. So I think that's so. I love that. Yeah, good stuff. Yes, myself. <laughs> good, good and I'm stuff. I'm not a basketball girl, but like I said, I, I loved Kobe as a philanthropist, as um, just an individual for what he did for the community he lived in and the young people. And so, you know, I mess around and get the game and put it in the frame and let it sit there, you know? That's. <laughs> I say you gonna you gonna represent and also support. All right. <laughs> so check this out. Let's talk about some black girl magic. So raise your hand if you use Pinterest, right? And you get on Pinterest and you try to search for things and you like you gotta add those those two magic words, right? For black or those three magic words for black women. Okay. So there is something called melanininterest.com okay. that one of my sisters came up with, and she said, you know what? I'm tired of having to put four black women at the end of it. I'm just going to throw melanin interest out here. Here you go. You ain't even got to do it. It's for you. And it's beautiful. I was on there earlier, and it's wonderful to see a website that's all us, y'all. It's beautiful. Oh, wow. Um, that that is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Styles and I can't find nothing because I didn't bring it up, you know, <laughs> and, and whatever else is on there. I don't know. Yeah, so it's beautiful. Um, and the beautiful thing about it, it's on Android for right now, and you can, of course, search it on your web browser. It's coming to Apple soon, so all my Apple people be on the lookout. And even if you don't have the app, y'all use y'all's web browser for everything else. Support, 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 support. So, absolutely yeah. good stuff, good stuff. Yeah. Isn't that mm. beautiful? Yes, it that. is. Yeah, I love that. So when I look up a twist out, I ain't looking at Ashley Simpson. What she know about a twist out? Nothing. See, look. <laughs> <laughs> Google know they're wrong for that. They not, know they're wrong for that. 
<laughs> not that it's, it's not their fault that their pictures be showing up. It's just... And I ain't saying there's no offense to Ashley, but why a twist-style baby? Right. Yeah, come on now. Come on. Come on. <laughs> right. So our last bit of what's really real, y'all. We have a real-life healer in our presence. Never mind Superman. I don't care about Batman. We are talking about Mr. Philip Blanks. This man was visiting his friend in their Arizona apartment, and he noticed that there was a fire happening in the upstairs apartment building, and a mother had to make the hard choice to throw her child, her three-year-old, over the balcony in order to save their life. And Mr. Blanks caught this child. Save their life. All right. So, yeah, a, salute. Salute to him okay. for that. That's amazing. That is, yeah, he's a former um, United States Marine and a former high school football player. So all his skills and talents came to youth. And so shout out to him for that. Um, the mother and the child, they're A-OK, which is also beautiful. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's wonderful. That is beautiful. All right now. Good stuff for what's really real. This yes, week, thank you so like kindly. It. Thank you. <laughs> could, could we? Could you keep that same energy as we continue? Look. <laughs> but Chiron is in rotation, so I'm like, let me give y'all a break this week because we already heavy with the emotions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we so appreciate it. So. <laughs> Woo! I know, right? <laughs> this is like yes. <laughs> Do the prayer hands. That's what. <laughs> oh, I love it! I love it. So, um, so Miss Destiny, did you want to take us into the discussion? Sure. I mean, why not? Do it. Hey, do, do it. Do it. Destiny. Destiny. <laughs> So this week we are getting into um, the discussion of representation, why it matters, and who it matters to. Mm, okay. So, you know, it it kind of branches off of the conversation we were having last week about the black and how we only see the black woman in so different and limited aspects of life. You know, it's either the angry black woman or the strong black woman. Um, but there, we don't get to see the black woman that's in love or the black woman that's, you know, ambitious about work or whatever, but can also be a family woman. So it just got me to thinking about all the other aspects of life where representation really does matter. It's seeing a limited um, picture or an idea of who you can be. You limit yourself in who you can be. Um, so... That is, that's where I'm, that's the discussion for today. Okay, Destiny. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And can I just say, like, when you, when you picked the topic and we were discussing it, my mind instantly just started flowing because I'm like, that's really an interesting, um, I mean, it's such a topic, like, you could really go on and on about it because it's one of those things where you hear it all the time, like, representation matters, represent who you are, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it's like, it, it really is one of those things where if you don't catch it, you'll you'll miss the fact that you're not being accounted for. So I think this is going to be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and so on our um, roster, basically, you know, Yara Shahidi, so much love to her. Um, a quote that she um, shared is that good, bad, or indifferent, TV helps to define our collective reality. She continues and says that, and if a child grows up never seeing themselves represented as successful or as the hero, then they are the anomaly. If they succeed and the expect expectation if they fail. So kind of what are you all's thoughts on that? Um, it really just goes to talk about the um, the effect that media, of course, can have our idea of who we are and who we can be um, because that's so I mean as a young person you a lot of your time watching TV and that's just that's just a fact of life like you spend a lot of time watching TV watching movies and I think a lot of times when you're watching these TV the TV and watching movies you get an idea of what's possible in the world you know you watch Cinderella and you're like oh my gosh it's possible to find a handsome fella or whatever you want to call them, whatever. It's possible. So the 
the TV on TV media it has a um a big it's a big factor into exposure into um exposing young people to what's possible and possibilities in the world. Yeah. And so I think that just goes to show like if you're not able to see yourself in that way, if you're not exposed to possibilities beyond um what you can see in your own environment, then sometimes it just um you don't reach for it what you can't see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. good. What about you, Nisa? I'm stuck on what she said. You don't reach for what you can't see. Destiny, that's deep. Because it is one of those things where you think about it. Like, when you know how, like, if you reach for your phone on a nightstand at night, it's because in your mind you can picture it being on the nightstand where it usually is. But let's say you don't have a nightstand. You would never go for that thought in your head, oh, let me reach on this desk and grab it. Destiny, you touched on something that was deeper than you even knew. Like, yeah. Um. But I think it definitely has a big impact what we see on the media. Um, Definitely. Like, there was a point in time where I remember as a kid, I wanted to be a fly girl growing up, okay? Because I used to watch In Living Color, Mm -hmm. and they would be on there, and they were dope. And they were, you know, they were were sisters. I'm like, Mom, I want to be a fly girl. Like, I want to be on there with my little bell bottoms, and I want to do this. I wanted to do it, okay? Love it. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Keenan, every way. Like, I wanted to do that. Um, that was it. That was like, that's what I really wanted to do. And I remember hearing my dad say, well, what about being a lawyer? What about being, you know, what if you wanted to be this or that? And my first thought was like, that's not something we do, you know? Um, so I think it definitely has a big impact. And you even see the way people treat um, the those who they don't expect to succeed. Like if you see a young man walking down the street and he may look a certain way, you know, and the world may have presented him a certain way and he opens his mouth, it's like, oh, you speak well. Oh, you articulate well. Next thing you know, this brother like, well, yeah, I got a PhD from da-da-da-da-da. You know what I mean? So it's like the media definitely has an impact on how people see us and even how we see ourselves. That whole you speak well or even I mean, on both sides, I've I've had it where, you know, of course, initially from being up north and then coming to the south, uh, I was told, you know, even like you talk white or, you know, even from people who were white, then they would say, oh, you, you know, you speak so well. And it's kind of like, is that but is that supposed to be the compliment, though? Like, I'm just, right. I may be speaking proper English, but. Like that's not, I, I didn't, I'm, I, I don't know that that for me it wasn't like a compliment for me even as a younger kid I was just like what I mean because I'm I'm speaking how we normally speak yeah so I don't know yeah. I mean I say that to say like even the that um, our expectations of ourselves like and and kind of the thought of how you think about yourself and and whether it's speech or or whatever. Um, you know, it goes back to you defining, you know, just who you are and, and from what you do see that you then um, you do what's comfortable for you. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like you just said that Miss Humphrey and it made me think like I had met when I first moved here because I'm from the Midwest. <laughs> 614, but guys, stand up. <laughs> and I first got here and I had a conversation with an older gentleman and I'm saying and I, if y'all feel the way that's between you and God um, I believe in the South that there is a um, different um, way of doing things um, just because it's like you know it's old Southern so women there's a role for women there's a role for men they're very old school with like their morals and things like that and so when I was speaking with this gentleman, like I said, I'm from the Midwest. We're not exactly the most, you know, passive sisters out here. We're a little rough around the edges, just a little bit. And I remember him saying, like, he was trying to, like, speak over me. And I wasn't having it. And he mm. looked me in my eye because he shook my hand. He looked me in my eye. He said, oh, you're not from around here, are you? I said, not at all. And he was like, yeah, I can tell because the women don't act like that. Women aren't supposed to act like that. And I'm just kind of like, 
what am I supposed to act like? Like, wow. if I have something to say, it's something I can say. And that's even a part of representation, like from coast to coast type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I absolutely. Definitely, definitely believe that representation goes past media. Like what you see in your home, what you see school, like all of those things, it matters. And I think um, that we should, as a people, not just, you know, like black people, but just people in general, we should be more um, intentional about how we conduct ourselves in the how, like in home and how we, um, talk about our dreams and our aspirations because you know if you if you're in a household where um people don't really talk about their dreams or they don't really um talk about going after their dreams or when they do talk about going after their dreams there's like this negative connotation to it it's like well well then I think I shouldn't do that then if that's what it if that's negative negativity and I shouldn't try to do anything that's going to, you know, be in that way. I shouldn't go chase my dreams because nobody in my house thinks that's a good idea mm. or it doesn't work with people like me, you know? Yeah. I think um, negative self-talk, sometimes it starts at home. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. yeah. Like that fear in them early or like that cautiousness in them early and all of a sudden they start thinking not small but they start thinking um negative like everything is very pessimistic instead of being like you know other children are told oh the world is your oyster you can be you can do um and I feel like as a black child it was more so like well, what if you go out here and do this and this happens Mm-hmm. What if you go out and try this and this happens? Or, oh, you can't do that because then people will look at you and think this. Um, so I think that we definitely have a lot to overcome in order for us to feel like, yeah, I can achieve this. Like, this is nothing, this isn't something small. Or like, oh, what I want to do isn't going to make me money. Like, so what? It might not for the first couple of years. I can do this. This isn't something that's, you know, not black enough or not whatever enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, and I know, you know, we we were talking about that whole, like, even Google at a glance. And so, um, Nisa, share more about that. Yeah. So, um, I'm a Googler, meaning I'll watch a movie and look at an actor and be like, where do I know him from? And then I'll get on Google and find out his old background. And then I know his children's name and all that stuff. Um, and so, when I Google things, I Google sometimes just for the fun of it. Um, I don't Google y'all, hey. <laughs> and so, like, I have, hey, y'all, y'all, y'all looking good on the internet, digital footprint looking real good. All right, I'm proud. Oh, well, good um, stuff. Look, <laughs> that's new. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. no. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I'm Wait a minute. <laughs> you know, hey. So, when I got to Google it, oh, my. Um, like, I Googled the words just for fun, professional hairstyles for women. Because I'm always trying to do something different with my hair. Destiny, if you ask Destiny, Miss Humphrey, I'm the braid baby. I, my hair is always braided up. Okay. And so I'll do maybe a red braid, but it'll be like a professional color, a purple braid, but it's professional. So I Google professional hairstyles for men and or women. And we don't come up, y'all. We ain't there. We ain't even on the ninth page. We're nowhere to be found. But if you Google unprofessional, if you Google ghetto, if you Google urban, then that's where we are. It's like we always need that keyword that differentiates us from being, I guess, um, socially acceptable or decent, if you will. Um, And it's kind of like, dang, that's offensive. So I can't go Google. Or even if you Google beautiful women, we're not there. (laughs) And it's like, dang. So what's my seven-year-old cousin to think if she gets on Google one day for a class project about beauty and she goes to Google beautiful actresses and there is no Yara Shahidi, there's no Lupita, there's no Gabrielle Union. It's just like everyone who doesn't look like her. So let me ask this. Is that a Google issue or is it how I mean, is that coming from them from that particular company is what I'm saying? I don't know if it's because I think. You know, I'm not a techie person. I think Google is based off of, like, what search the most type of thing. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Or, like, what may be popular at that moment. Because you could even Google, like, um, uh, 
most famous artists of the decade and they'll pull up like the coolest ones now and then go down that way so it honestly could just be their research team doing the research and all it is or all that's being searched um the majority popularity is stuff that doesn't look like this and that could be a society issue you know Mm. i'm not sure how it works but the fact that there's no representation on something as big as google you know like right that's That's sad something yeah, you Google Disney princesses. Where is Tiana at? She y'all put her in there, even though she was a frog through half the movie. Y'all put her that in is there. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's sad. It is so sad. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, so I I don't know if that's like I don't know what it is, but it is one of those things where it's like Google is a part of the media, and Google should be something also that considers the representation of all people. Yeah. That's crazy. I just... Yeah. <laughs> it's like, think about it. But if you look up, like, um, if you look up something like a uh, rapper beats up girlfriend or a singer beats up girlfriend, or um, if you look up loud and, like, any type of the negative connotations that are usually tied to people who look like us, mm-hmm. we the first one to pop that. Me wow. and Rob Stewart, we pop up. We could be talking about a white man in Texas, but we gonna pop up. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, what? What? How y'all doing this, Google? What y'all got going on? Who's in y'all's research lab doing this research? Somebody need to be fired or something. Yeah, I think that's one of those things to bring to their attention. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, that's what. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My thing would be like, at what point do we, um, as a, um, as people who find a problem with it, like, when do we take responsibility for, like, letting certain things like this happen? Mm-hmm. You know I mean? um, because I think, even as Black people, I think we get complacent and we get comfortable in these negative connotations of who we are. And for example. Um, love and hip hop, reality mm-hmm. TV, mm-hmm. representation. Uh, yeah, yeah. Even though you know we we okay with the drama because it makes good TV. That's just the facts. But um, we can't be the type of people to go, oh, that's not how all of us are, or that's not um, that's not how I like to see myself. But you can't say that and then and spend hours and hours in front of the TV watching it and supporting it and then going to social media and talking about it and making it a popular thing, you know? Mm-hmm. The more you support, the more you um, put energy into those things, that's what's going to keep coming up about us. That's what's going to keep uh, being said about us. That's what's going to keep being seen because that's what we feed into. Yeah. And I mean, when I was younger, I was like, well, it ain't no, it ain't no big deal. But I started to notice, like, even just watching it, I started to carry those same characteristics of the people that I was watching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's like, if I don't want to be seen that way, then I can't feed into it, and I can't let it become a part of me, even though that's not who I am, you know? And I had to stop watching it, because, like, I'm not, I'm not out here trying to mess with somebody else's man and be messy about it. Like, that's not, that's not who I am. Yeah. That's real. Absolutely. And I think those shows, like, because I remember the first season on like, Love and Hip Hop, and I used to be a huge supporter because I loved the Andy and Mendeecey storyline and Christy. I just thought they were so cool. Um, like, you know, just learning about, you know, seeing the insides of their life. And so I remember it started off with a plot. Like, it was about watching them kind of do their hustle, how they made their way through the music world. And then it turned into Baby Mama, Baby Daddy mess and just all this other shenanigans. And so I haven't watched in literally, like, years since I was in college, and that was, like, 2012. Um, But I remember, like, I stopped watching it because my thought process, knowing it was, like, y'all literally have taken something to teach us about people's relationship with music and the relationship, like, how they maintain their music career and their families, and y'all turned it into a WWE SmackDown when everybody else who don't look like us get The Bachelor. And they get the cutesy game shows and we get an hour and a half or uh, each week of nothing but what? Be this, be that. You sleeping with him, so am I. And 
for what? Like, what is that? What is that? How is that impacting anybody? So, and pretty much that's like a franchise. So, you know, how, what would you all recommend? I know, I don't know the young lady's name who, who's over it. Um, Cause it's a franchise for love and hip hop, right? Like yeah. they have love and hip hop in the different cities. Um, mm-hmm. Because I mean, it is feeding an audience and that goes back to what you're saying. If this is kind of, um, that's thing you're talking about, if, the, if you're supporting it and you know, people are watching it. So it, it's kind of there. What do you all recommend to do? Because it, it is a it is an audience that is feeding into it. I mean, I say make it about the music. Like I remember the first time I ever heard of the show. I thought it was about the music. Like, and I as a music lover, mm-hmm. like lived up my heartbeat as in a beat tune. Like I love music. I thought it was going to be about how these people, you know, these artists we thought were so dope growing up make their way through the industry people like the first season i think i ever like really tuned into for real was like with this artist named saya and she was um was that her i think it was her and she was trying to maneuver through the game as like an openly lgbtq artist you know that there's not a big area for her at the time and it's like this is interesting you mm-hmm. get to see her struggles fight her flight um but it wasn't all the mess. And the mess is what I can do without. Like, we see so much trauma and mess in a daily basis. Why do we need to literally pay for scripted mess? You mm. know what I mean? Because that's what it is, is scripted mess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, I agree with Nisa, you know, as far as Love and Hip Hop, taking it back to the music and making it about the music. But I also think at this point, point love and hip-hop is so far de- like gone it's like in order to really change what they give us we have to change how we see ourselves personally like it's gonna have to start with the audience because if the audience wants drama it's like media is a um is a supply and demand type thing mm-hmm. so if you want to see some drama they gonna give us drama hey that, that's real that, yeah if we want to see mess, they gonna give us mess because that's how they're making their money. We are the consumers, and so we we kind of make the decisions for them of what they put out. And so, in order for that to change, we have to our mindsets have to shift on what we want to see and how we want to see ourselves represented in those spaces because that's the only way it's gonna change. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna change until we like okay, listen. Um, I know that's how y'all making y'all money, whatever, but I don't, I don't like that. I'm not going to watch it. Right. And, and, and force them into something else. Yeah. Yeah. And I say, too, you know, and then because if there is an audience for it, it is what it is. So it's almost as though, which we do have, we have plenty of, you know, as it relates to, um, uh, filmmakers and, you know, who are coming out with different content and different things. So it's like, it's almost as though not to, you know, cause that's going to be there. It is. It's all, <laughs> I don't, yeah. I don't think because you're going to, they have an audience for it. So it, it is there, but then it's like, you know what I, then like you all are saying, so I don't support it anymore because that's not my cup of tea. So then I am going to support and push those new filmmakers who are coming out or who are actually creating and making the content that we would like to watch or create it yourselves too, you know? I, I mean, I think about that, like, especially if that's your area to of what you do, it's kind of like, hey, if if you can create it, you know, this is definitely in 2020, you can pretty much, you can make stuff fly. Like, you can put it out there, and if you get an audience or, like you were saying, like someone who they're willing to support it, you you got a hit, and you just keep pushing, you know, and, and putting it out there and elevating you know, um, humanity in that way. I think about that. Like whatever way you can, however your, um, whatever your talent is and, and however you can, you know, get new content out and, you know, be able to, you know, to share in that way. I think that's how you change it and moving in the direction that you want it to be, you know? So, so yeah. And I agree with that because I mean, there are people who live for the jungle. They and just gonna do it. <laughs> be is better fit for them rather than having the drama in life. And I think my only issue would be that um, I do want to see more than just that. You know, Absolutely. I, I want to see a diverse, um, more diverse 
like roles or representations of who we can be and who we are because there's more than one type of person. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. and that's, what I, that's what I just, I would want to see, like, that's the change I want to see. I want to see more than just one side of what culture is. Yeah. And that makes me think of, like, living single. If y'all remember, mm. living single, you know what I'm saying? Like, back in the day, living single was the bomb.com because it was, like, it was all us, first of all. It was all us. And then the beautiful thing about it was they were all different type of women. So you had, like, the little sweet girl who was down home and real old school with her, um, you know, with her ways. And that was um, St. Clair. And then you had Khadijah, who was the girl next door, little hood, little edgy. Then you had um, Regine, you know, very Regine. lovely guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you had Maxine Shaw, attorney at law, okay? Yeah. Like, you that there was literally more than one type of black out there and it even showed um Khadija like she was a black girl who came from you know the hood in New York City but she made something out of herself you know what I'm saying and she still never forgot who she was or where she was from and she paid homage to it and I think shows like that in this day and age where you have so much talent and so many different people around the world with so so many wonderful voices, I think it's important for them to realize that they don't have to fit into this box just to get where they have to go. Yeah. Like, you can be all types of things. You can be everything. Absolutely. Like, you literally can do anything that you put your mind to, and you literally can be, like, from the roughest, toughest, grittiest city in the world and still get out here and soar. And I feel like people don't see that because of the things that – the media show because of the things like destiny said that they see in their home life because of the things that they're told about themselves so they stop believing or they never start to believe in themselves and that's how you get that one type of representation that we look at all the time and then when you are different you get oh you act like an oreo mm-hmm. and i too i have to give love to um colin overton you know even on with <laughs> living single because i think in a, a one of the popular episodes that that comes up for me of course it is on um i don't know if it's netflix or hulu right now um is it is it hulu and so but even that episode where when they were playing the card game with the other guys and he did you know step up you know what i'm saying and and represent um like well, step up for a regime you know in that way against those his boss Basically, you know, and I say Kyle did, you know, in that episode and it was the one, um, you know, where they were playing poker or whatever. And they came in, you know, kind of bum rushed their game. But I see even then like those they were two strong, even guys like, you know, Overton may be a little silly, you know, here and there. But they really did. They they still represented even strong men to me, you know. Um, and I think they fought for that. I, I believe I've heard him talk about that. Even, you know, kind of going up against these strong women. He was like, we can't come, you know, as the weak. <laughs> we can't be like the weak guys. Like, we really have to represent. So, like, shows like that, you know, as well as you have a different world. Like, you know, and things like that where um, those, like you're talking about with the representation, you know, and, and what we see. And so those may be older type shows. But then, you know, as we move forward we can, you know, begin to create more of what we want to see, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Especially yeah. with all the creative minds out here. You got all these, I mean, these young people, like I said today, they're amazing. And they have so many wonderful ideas. And I'm telling y'all right now, if y'all are tuned into this, if somebody's not giving you that opportunity and you have something that you want to put out there, don't wait for them. Go out there and make it happen. Go Correct. out there and make it happen. And I'm telling you right now, you have my full support for it. Okay? Yes. Word of mouth is a powerful thing. Word of mouth is a powerful thing. And you have no idea who you who you could talk to that could change your life. I had a mentor tell me, she said, not every opportunity will change your life, but every opportunity could. So I whoever love it. you you tell them what you're doing. You brag on yourself. You talk about your skill. And before you know it, the content that you want to put out there is out there. And then you got the next generation behind you looking at beautiful representation of themselves. And it's because you didn't wait for anybody. So don't wait. Put it out there. Get it out there today. Because we need it, y'all. We need it. Yeah, we do. We yeah, we do. So with this topic on ghetto angels, the stigma that come with the hood, what what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> so 
<laughs> I tell people all the time, I'm not like, cause I, for whatever reason, um, people think I am a little hub, a little hood, and I'm not. I'm just a little rough around my edges. Um, so, so you get like, that a I lot. Get, I get that all the time. Like I used to be cool with a girl growing up, and her mom would always say, "Like, yeah, I had to get ghetto like you." And that was like the joke. And as a child, I didn't get it. You know, it was just like, yeah, you know, because I tend to go off when I go off. But as I got older, I realized, like, y'all really put me, y'all, y'all try to put me in a box. Mm. Like, I'm not, by no means, like, we didn't, you know, we didn't grow up in the hood. We hung out in the hood, but we didn't grow up in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Like, the east side of Columbus raised me, and the south side kind of, you know, helped a little bit. But we wasn't, my, my mom and dad did their best, and they did well with what they had for all the children that, that they had. Um. Um, but I always, people didn't know how to take me because I don't turn off. So what you get is what you get. So, and I, I work with Miss, uh, or I started with Destiny and Miss Humphrey, and they know, like, Nisa is Nisa 24-7, whether she being a little rowdy and loud, whether she's, you know, enunciating her words and using all of her R's and P's perfectly in a sentence. You know, I am a well-rounded young lady, and but every once in a while, you know, you get that, you get that little, that little twang because I want to know who you think you're talking to and why you think you're talking to me like that. Mm-hmm. And I just remember thinking when um, I was told that someone had to quote unquote get ghetto like me, that when did speaking up for yourself mm. become yes. being yeah. ghetto? When yeah. did knowing what you want become ghetto? And even that that thing of like, oh my God, here comes that loud black person. It's like, no, we're just speaking up. When everyone else raises their voice or speaks passionately, they're just passionate about what they're talking about. Right. You know? Um, and so I felt like I call them ghetto angels because that's what they are. They turn into angels. Their dreams, their hopes and things, they turn into afterthoughts things that are no longer around or present physically because they've been squashed um and it just made me think about all the stigma when that comes with the hood you know you tell somebody where you from like oh yeah i'm from like let's say somebody from my city if they're like oh yeah i'm from um i'm from the terrace and that's like you know then they're like oh then you probably can't read well you probably can't do this way you probably don't know nothing about this you're going to need this type of training you don't know anything about this like there's a stigma that comes with not being from such a prominent area and so i call them ghetto angels because it's like you know angels they're gone they're not they're not around no more um but these babies are around and regardless of what their zip code is their intelligence is all get out Mm. <laughs> I'm I'm still, you know, feeling some type of way about, you know, the whole I had to get ghetto like you. Yeah. That's yeah, not she, that. she, and, just, and my mom was always like kind of like watch her, watch her. And I was just like, Mom, that's you know your mama know your friends were you know, mom, that's my friend. That's my girl. We know, we but, know. She, Look. She, called that. <laughs> she called that one. You know. Um, but yeah, and I just I yeah, our babies from the hoods or the ghettos, they need love too. They're not to be discarded. They're not to be put down or told that, oh, well, someone from your background, we don't know if you have that capability. Like, they they have a voice. That's where most of our, our dope artists come from. Absolutely. Um, that's where most of our, our most brilliant minds come from, you know, from from the ghettos where you got to make a way out of no way. Um. So yeah, this is this is you know the the section of ghetto angels really was my shout to them, cause the stigma of the hood is not good, but at the end of the day, the hood used to be a family. Absolutely, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. I know, like even for me, like I'm I am I'm originally from Chicago and I'm from the south side of Chicago, and you know even with all the stigma with Chicago, we've gone through so many different things. I always rep it because that's that's a part of how I was raised and, and all my family on both sides, my mom and dad are, you know, originally from there. Like that's where they pretty much are and have been. And so I just, 
you know, I don't feel any type of way. Like, you know, it's kind of like that's where I, I came from. And that's, you know, and I, I'm proud um, of it. And, you know, I, I call myself affectionately a shytown town Southern Belle. Because, you know, so I I raised, you know, partly raised, you know, of course, in, in Chicago and then, you know, coming to Birmingham. And so um, and experiencing then the South, you know. Uh, but, yeah, so it's, you know, you really have to um, like even with that, like you said, your your mom knew and just, you know, watch people. But it goes back to we and we talk about it all the time. We talk about, you know, just being in tune with you. And really yeah. owning who you are and not allowing anyone. And, and maybe at some point you didn't have necessarily have a voice, but as you get yours, then you empower somebody else. Um, and so that's when we talk about the babies coming up. So, uh, but that whole, you know, those stigmas and stuff, it's like, even with that, like you were saying, Jesse, about breaking the stereotypes, we have to put that forth too. Like, Okay, I'm proud of it. I don't know what's wrong with you. Like, if you have something, you know, to say about that's where I'm from, I'm not going to, based on whatever's going on, I'm not um, going to let you rob that or take that from me because you feel some type of way about Chicago, you know, because we've gone through the different names, Chirac, you gone through different stuff and not saying that stuff hasn't gone on. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying there hasn't. But it's still like I remember when you talk about like growing up, I remember the street lights, you know, coming on. We on our bikes riding. I mean, you know, just doing stuff like throughout, especially the summers and stuff like that. So that's where a lot of my memories, you know, of my childhood is, you know, so. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, Destiny, let's move to this more than one type of black. Tell us about it, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I think I um I kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but just the idea that um a black person we're not all the same. Um, we have different tastes. We come from different backgrounds. We experience different cultures. Like there, are, of course, we have some things that we um can have in common. But just because I'm black doesn't mean I'm in love with rap music. Like, mm. I could I could be one of those people that love opera and symphonies and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So it's just the idea that we have different things. I may love to read and you may love to do something else. And that's fine. Like, we are diverse. We have different talents. We have different aspirations and different dreams. And that's okay because we should. We're all different people. And, um... We're not all from the hood, and that's okay. We don't all come from a middle-class family, and that's okay. Some of us are born and we're spoiled, and that's okay. Like, we don't have to come from the mud to be black. Right. We don't struggle to be black. Like, that's not something that has to be a universal thing. Like, yes, my parents did help me get my first car. Yes, they furnished my first apartment. And... So what? Right. It doesn't mean that um, I can't be successful because I didn't start from the bottom. No. Right. I'm successful and start midway. Like, that's okay. Um, and I, that's just my thoughts on that. So what do you guys think about it? I agree. I, I, <laughs> yeah. No, I agree with what you said. I, I think, and, and that's the thing with not looking down, I think, on each other. If we do have these different uh, backgrounds or we come, you know, from different experiences, whether you you didn't necessarily come from the mud, like you say, or if you did, can there be a, a common respect? I think that's my thing, even amongst us. I, you know, sometimes we tend to, you know, we talk about other people looking down or they look some type of way at us, but we tend to do that to each other in different ways. Like, you know, oh, well, you know. Like you didn't experience this or if you did, you know, and I just I I want us to really embrace there's more than one type of black. And we may not. I mean, you know, we're in a a world where it's it's imperfect. So it's it's going to be where you have some people. That's how they feel. You know, if you didn't go through the struggle, then, you know, oh, like you said, something was handed to you. Um, or if you if you did have stuff handed, then you're looking down at people who, you know, you, I just feel like you're going to always have that. But the message is, it's more than one type of black and you need to get used to it. It is what it is. 
that's yeah. not gonna change. So. Yeah, absolutely. There's a song that says, I think it's Heather Hadley, shout out to my girl, because she be singing. There's a song, and it goes like, the same people you meet coming up, you see them going down. Mm. And that's what it makes me think of. It's like, okay, so what? Like, you may have got it out the mud. You know what I'm saying? Or this person may have had help, assistance from their family. The way that we, the what the things that our people have been through, historically, the way that we should feel about each other should be like, okay, you're winning. I think that's beautiful. And mm. then that person who's up there should be like, okay, I'm here. I see you not quite there yet. Let me show you some ways that work for me. Maybe they may work for you. Maybe you may flip them differently to get where I'm at. It's a level up thing. We that's should not crazy. still be 400 plus years later, crabs in a barrel. Like it doesn't, it doesn't do us any good. And do you know how good you feel really when you see somebody out there shining and you like, yo, that's dope. Yeah. Don't just support black business because right now it's the popular thing to do. So don't support somebody right now because it's the hashtag and it's cool. Really do that because you want to see better for yourself, for your people, for the young ones that are looking at us. You know what I mean? Like there was a point in time where we were literally like step ladders. We were helping each other elevate. And we were doing well. And we let outside forces come into that and distort our way of thinking. And then the black person who ran too much was a nerd or they were whitewashed. And then the black person who may be from a different side of town, oh, they from over there. They don't know how to act. They a little ghetto. You know, the black person into maybe Japanese culture or they're bougie. They don't, you know, they don't identify with us. Nobody's better than the other if at the end of the day as a whole, our race is still looked at crazy. Because yeah. at the end of the day, when it comes to it, nobody sees your GPA, your financial statement, and they don't see how you talk or hear how you talk first. They see you long before they hear you, and they sum you up like that. So it's like, if you're going to be or have more, then you need to at least be appreciative enough and respectful enough of who you are to say, you know what, this is my brother, this is my sister, let me help them get where they're at. They may be a little different, that's okay. I ain't saying y'all gotta be best friends. But at least pull, you know, help somebody who wants to be helped. I think that's important. Absolutely. Good Great. stuff. Well, who's gonna take over the next segment? You, Miss Humphrey, do it, do it. Look. <laughs> cool the beans, cool the beans. So our first question is, when did you first see yourself represented in mainstream media? If I'm being honest, I don't think I've seen myself completely represented in media quite yet. Okay. Uh, I don't know. It's just because uh, um, I'm a little bit kooky. I'm a little bit uh, different. And that's, and that's fine. I think... In that aspect, I have seen some weird black girls, but I mean, I'm not like, you know, just, I believe different things. Um, I go hard for what I believe in. And when I'm asked about it, like if you have me a conversation and I get to talk and I'm all about it. Um, I was raised in church and I hold those values dear to me. I'm still a church girl and I just, um, when I see church girl in the media, it's like negative. Like, oh, yeah, church girls, they, you got to watch out for them because they have been locked up in the house. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. I, I, I haven't really seen myself completely represented. And that's, and that's okay. Like, it's not okay. But I'm getting to understand that um, I might have to be happy. I might have to represent myself. And, oh, I'm I'm very conscious about that. Like, uh, I try my best to carry myself to know that I can see that representation because it's um, it might just have to be me. And that's that's, just something that's, I'm doing. that's what I heard. I'm very conscious of that. Like, I'm very conscious that even if I'm not paying attention, that there's somebody watching me, watching how I carry myself, watching um. Like, am I am I going to church and doing things crazy when I'm not in church? Am I in church, you know, singing 
whatever. And on social media, being messy and calling people outside of their names. Mm -hmm. that, those are things that I try to be very conscious of. I love you, bro. You're dope. <laughs> you are so dope. I love it. Because, yeah, she, y'all, she's not just talking to talk. Like, Destiny really is um, authentically who she is and her faith and her values and her morals are what they are and I, I love that about you I love that I really do yeah. I really do that's beautiful I love you too bro <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean I used to think like when I was little my first like idea of like oh a little girl who kind of reminds me of me was like Kyla Pratt when she was in one on one, because she like she wanted to be an actress and she was like all this energy, and that was me, you know, like I was gonna be a fly girl, and then I was gonna start doing e news, you know, like that was my dream, right? Um, but then I realized like there really is no girl who has the background that I have. Like I grew up in a Muslim household, and so you know. <laughs> That's not even on the media yet. Like, we still don't have that one. Um, and so, where I'm not, and I tell people all the time, I'm not the perfect example. Don't look at me and look for the perfect example. I'm very rough. My journey is different than most people. But my values and my core is, all, like, home is always home for me. The nation um, and Islam is always home. I feel the most at peace when I am on my knee and, you know, doing my stuff how I'm supposed to. And so... I remember thinking that like Kyla Pratt was my first representation. And then after a conversation with my mom, I realized like, they, she's like, why don't you write a book about what it was like to grow up like Muslim, but da da da. And I was like, but there's somebody who did that. And she's like, who? And I was like, oh, you're right, nobody did it. Um, so I haven't really seen like me, me, but as far as like energy and being carefree and just feeling beautiful in their in their in their self and comfortable. I feel like Kyla Pratt gave me that when she gave me Brianna Barnes in a uh, one on one. So I appreciate her for that because she was just dope in that. She was really dope in that, and I, I appreciated that as a young girl. Yeah, yeah. I I feel like for me, uh, it it really was. I, I think about like the Cosby Show, um, and and more so. I know a lot of it, it's gotten a lot of flack, of course, within recent years for, you know, for different reasons um, as it relates to like, you know, of course, Mr. Cosby. Right. But when I think about what was created and I know also, you know, it's been criticized, like we weren't lawyers or doctors or whatever. And it's kind of like this is what it was. But I felt like it was really about family. Um, it wasn't just about their professions. Um, I feel like being able to see what I desire to see as a, you know, just a educated person or even, you know, like I said earlier about talking proper or it's that's I mean, that's kind of what the representation was like. It wasn't just, a, um, I guess, the stereotypes, even, you know, kind of the different movies where they want to portray us in the negative light. I felt like um, in the 80s during that time, that was kind of, you know, for me with, with growing up, that we were in front of the TV um, on Thursdays watching, you know, Cosby show, you know. And so from, you know, like I said, their family, th just the, the togetherness, I feel like they showed that. And that's kind of even like my family. We, we were like that when it came to family gatherings and, you know, family reunions and things like that. We that's that's the bond that we had you know so so yeah i i mean that's the first time for me um when i saw it so yeah okay so next do you think we as black people have a responsibility to turn down all content that isn't an admirable reflection of black culture even if it is true I think possibility if you're um, very outspoken about your like dislikes of it. Like if, if you are one of those people who are like very adamant, like I don't appreciate how the media shows us. I, I'm not, I disagree with how they do things. Well, then it is your responsibility to not play into it. Not encourage it. 
And that's just, that's just how I feel. Okay. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's a catch-22 because um, every story has to be told, you know? And you have, like, our directors and stuff like that and our artists. Like, you have the... Um, the wonderful uh, Spike Lee, you know, he, he gives us all the, he gives us all the black, you know what I'm saying? And even when it's like the stereotypes and whatnot, if you pay attention to the movies and don't just view them as entertainment, you pick up the messages in them Absolutely. and you pick up the reasoning behind the thing. And so while they may not always be admirable, uh, admirable, they are stories that need to be told. They're lessons that, you know, we need to know about, you know what I mean? So I feel as though, Maybe it's the way you do it. If you're doing so to educate versus just entertain, then maybe. Like if your if your goal is education and entertainment, like the higher learning, like school days, um, then okay, you know, fine, I'll rock with it. But if you just out here just putting out content, because okay, y'all, we need to read a, reach a black quota for a black audience. Let's give them another. Uh, baby boy even though i love that movie and all its toxicity let's give him another one of these you know or let's give him another um movie where the man is this and the woman is that and they don't have a good decent relationship and it's all this drama and we don't need that we don't need it and i'm telling you right now i don't want it give me something like the photograph Issa ray did her thing with that movie that was a beautiful example of black people in love and it wasn't bougie. It wasn't stuck up. There was a little, you know, a little sauce to it. You know, a little zing. Now we call ourselves liking from our men, you know. And she was educated, but she still had her roughness about her. And there was a beautiful example of a black couple doing everything they could to see their relationship succeed. I, I watched that again. Oh, mm-hmm. so, yeah. I feel like if you're doing it to educate, okay, fine. But if you're just putting out content... Just because you want to get a few laughs. We don't need that. We don't need that. Yeah. And I saw, um, so Ava DuVernay, I actually, um, the Cherish the Day. Have y'all seen that? No, tell me more. So she has a, well, and I don't know if it's on there now. It was on there. I want to say it may have been. It, it's a new show for her um, on OWN. And because I even, I even signed up and subscribed <laughs> To all only because of that. <laughs> it happened a few months back where um, it was like the last episode, but then you could, I was able to like get the, uh, get to view the whole season, but cherish the day. And I mean, but even that's about, you know, black love and um, just the different challenges that they um, went through as a couple, you know. Uh, so I'm looking forward to, you know, what's next on that with our next season. But this was season one. But, yeah, it's called Cherish the Day. Oh, and in um, the representation, like even with that, you know, the gentleman, he's a lighter skin. But then the young lady, she's dark skin. Um, so even like their dynamic, but just, you know, she's this artist, this what you know, this um, artist type person. And he's like, a, I want to say if he's like a, um, a engineer or something like that. But yeah, so they're kind of, they've come from two different worlds, basically. But yeah, that's that's real cool. But um, you know, I, I mean I, I agree with both of you as it relates to um to you know, when it comes to black culture and kind of the reflection of it. So yeah. Cool. Well y'all know that twenty seconds or less is on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Destiny, like she always think about her saying, I'm committed to this. (laughs) She's ready, y'all. She always thinks she's ready, but I'm going to throw her the curveball today, baby. Uh, She wants me to live, but I don't appreciate that. Okay, you could be great in all things, but I'm on your neck about this one, baby, okay? <laughs> My, <laughs> look. <laughs> 20 seconds or less category. We started off with songs, y'all, so we're going to stick with the song theme. So, in 20 seconds or less, I should give you five, but I'm going to give you three. You're going to name three songs with the word world in it, Okay. I may look at you, you look scratched. I'm gonna give you 25 seconds for your troubles. Okay, ready? Set. 
daddy. I gotta go first. Do you want to? Well, let's have to look up like I have You committed. You committed. Okay. <laughs> World, okay? One. Um, wait. Two. Uh, 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 three. Okay. Two. One. Go. Um. Men in the mirror. Uh, okay. So we are the world. Okay. Um. Um. I don't know, this is hard. What other song with Jesus? What other song has world in it? I'm sure there's a Christian song, but a gospel song, but I can't think of it right now. Oh, y'all hear that? That's not like the time. I was thinking it's a whole new world. <laughs> yeah. That was the first one that came up with. <laughs> I was thinking, and y'all know, I know I'm going to get a whooping for this. I was thinking world's greatest. I'm sorry. Sorry. Sorry, y'all. We... The graduation songs are stuck in my head. This is what we graduated to was that and and, and uh, I believe I can fly. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't I got two out of three. That's fine. I'm okay with I got it. A question. Where is world the man in the mirror? Break that one down for me. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself. <laughs> and make oh, she was talking about like the title. Now she did do that now. That she, 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 she sung the, she sung the lyrics. Look, <laughs> you said name basically name three with the word world in it. Like so I she did, kinda on the title. She was right on that now. I did like think it. about it at first, but you didn't say it had to be in the title. I did. I did. But she did her thing because I was I was trying to figure out if she knew where the world world the word world was. Y'all see that 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 tongue twister that Me. world world was. The world, you world. Gotta, you gotta buy. All right, Miss Humphrey. My, my. You have to think of three songs with the word over in it. Three, two, one. It's over now. Mm. <laughs> for Luke. I, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I'm just, just like, <laughs> what is it? Um, now see, and if I think of like, I'm trying to see. Uh, she started so strong. I know. I was like, you know, came and with it, like, and then it was like, yeah, because I'm thinking some about uh, uh, what's this song? Over the rainbow. Right. And what's the what else did you have, Nisa? What was Girl, it? Girl, it's over by Jackie Dead. Who? Girl, it's over. I don't it's recall that one. Let's, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Destiny, and go ahead with what you got for her. Look, <laughs> she about to take us on the concert. <laughs> Come on, Destiny. Come on. You got it. Your word, if you choose to accept, which you have to because there is no choice. Hey. New. New? Like K N E? No. W? E W. Okay. All right. Let's see, Red. Oh, you got it? Yes, I got it either because I'm not starting yet. Okay, go. Okay, a whole new world. Because Miss Alfred gave me that earlier. Um, oh God, that don't count. You can't repeat. Why not? No. That's cheap. Okay, well hold on. You gotta start it over. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, oh go ahead. <laughs> Give her a go. Go ahead, cause I don't want her being like, I didn't even get a chance. I know how competitive you are, so. <laughs> Just start start it over, Destiny. Let us start over. Give her a new give her a new word. That's what. <laughs> oh man, that so was she, a good word. It, it okay. was. Um, I can't think of nothing with new in it. So yeah. Uh, no. Look, um, yeah. You do the new. Do the new. Look. Wait, <laughs> out. I'm gonna be out here cheating. Wait, no. Give me a new one. Go on, cause I. Uh, 
Well, your new word is no. K N O W. Okay. Uh, okay. Are we thinking yet? Hold on. Oh God. Okay. Um, Joe, I want to know. Um, do you know the Muffin Man? And um, uh, tell me what you know about love by Samo. Is this the most Simon Mo? I don't know. He's saying I'm gonna ride on your baby daughter mm-hmm. night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that new because you know what I know. I know, right? Pay the wall, but that's from Sesame Street, so I don't think that <laughs> Is that even a song? I got new way to walk. Walk, walk. I got kids. <laughs> My niece love that. And I'm feeling it was Destiny's child. And she gets the body rub. I got a new way to work. Uh-uh. See, 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 and scene. Look, <laughs> well, we have made it to our How You Feeling, sis. We want to check in at the end of our episode four. How y'all feeling? Feeling mighty fine, Clyde. All right, what my good sister Nina Simone say, and I'm feeling good. Look. That one right Look. there. <laughs> <laughs> Look. <laughs> yes, I'm feeling good. It's it's all love over here. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Good, good. I um, is there anything y'all wanted to? To share as we, you know, go ahead and do our outro. Um, Any shout outs or anything? Um, I want to shout y'all out. Like, y'all have been amazing. And I think um, this journey has really been dope so far. Um, So, yeah, shout out to y'all. Because it's already hard being black, but to be black and a woman and be as powerful and as wonderful. I'm not going to say strong because that's a given, but as powerful and as wonderful as y'all are and as um, tender hearted, I would say. I think that it is amazing. So shout out to y'all and to all my other powerful and tender hearted queens out there. Shout out to y'all. Y'all deserve it. Um, so, yeah. Right back yeah, you. yeah, right back at you now. As um, as you always say, Ashe. <laughs> <laughs> Ashe, yeah. That's the give day, give yeah. that to you. Give that. Give it all of that back to you. No, definitely appreciate that. What about you, Miss Destiny? Um, I don't really have much more to say other than um, I appreciate y'all for having me. I mean, I feel like I leave it all on the table when I when I do. In, I'm like, y'all give me a chance to talk my stuff, and I, I appreciate that. Yeah. I, <laughs> no, that's that's all love. I, I feel that way about um, both of you. And, um, I mean, I know I say it and, and give you your props, but I love to give people their flowers while they can smell them. And those words um, of affirmation to um, to actually, you know, just bless bless you and send, send love your way. So, I'm grateful to both of you. So thank you for joining me on this journey. Um, it is it's truly, uh, it's been a blessing for me as well. And um, I look forward to, you know, us getting together every week. So good stuff, good stuff. <laughs> well, everyone, we just thank you so much for joining us um, on this journey, you know, just joining us for this particular episode. And we look forward to talking to you all soon. Keep shining. <laughs>